Hi there folks, if you are a Microsoft 365 admin with users in Europe, there are some changes that are coming to the Windows single sign-on experience that you need to be aware of. In this video, we'll look at what those changes are and what you need to do to prepare your help desk and your users for this change. So what's this change all about? This is a change that Microsoft is rolling out to Windows to comply with the Digital Markets Act in the European Economic Area. And now, the November 16th blog post called out um, when that release came out in the Insider Build. And a few weeks ago, um, we have this blog post on the Windows IT Pro blog that called out more details about this change. Now, this change, uh, users can expect to start seeing it in early 2024 if their Windows region is set to a country that's in the European Economic Area. Uh, now they'll see it when they access the first application or the service the user accesses um, after that change is deployed onto their desktop or for the very first time a user signs into a device. So what's this notice? The notice will ask users if they would like to sign into the application with the same credential they used to sign into Windows. Uh, and the notice also informs them that when they sign in, Microsoft will use the same credential to sign them on to the other Microsoft apps that are running on Windows, right? So um, the user will see the first time they use an app that enables single sign-on with either a personal account or a work or school Enter ID after signing in. So in this video, I'm just going to focus on Enter ID uh, for the enterprise use case. Now, if the user chooses to use the same credentials they use to sign into Windows, uh, then the notice will not appear again. So if they hit continue, they won't see this notice again on, on that device. Right now, if the user chooses not to sign in and they say don't sign in, they will be given an opportunity to sign in with different credentials. Um, if the application can be used without signing in, then the user will uh, can choose to use the app unauthenticated. Right, so that's the change. Now, how can you test it? You can get the release preview channel build. Uh, make sure that it's 2631, 2787, and you can then start testing it on your devices. Make sure the region you choose is a region in the European economic area. Right, so let's jump into a demo of how that looks. Now, the first time the user signs in, after they've received the latest build, which has these changes, they will see a prompt that comes up telling them that they need to fix the sign-in, uh, which is similar to what you would see here. Uh, sometimes it could be they might open an app and then see this, uh, see the prompt. So the user would um, then be directed to click through there and um, redo their sign-in. So let's go ahead and... Uh, Sign the user in. And the user would then see this prompt, right? So this is the, the key change that will be rolling out where they would get the option to say, Continue to sign in. Do you want to continue or not? Uh, let's first go with the better experience where I just click continue. Um, we consent to it. And then on this same device, the user would not see that prompt again. Now, once that's done, uh, if the user opens Edge, um, they should be signed in. Sometimes it takes a few minutes for that initial signing to go through. Um, let's say I open up word or one of the desktop applications you should see the same single sign-on experience as well um, i shouldn't get prompted there by default again there might be a few minutes before that takes to kick in all right now this is take two let's see what happens when the user says don't sign in what the experience will be across the different applications right so I'm asked to verify, I click sign in, and I would go ahead and complete the sign in. All 
right? So at this critical point, the user reads this message and says, don't sign in. And what happens then is they see this error message that's logged that says the user denied permissions um, to consent doing single sign-on across this device. And they're basically taken back to the same state, right? So they'll, they can still keep repeating the cycle. This will not go away until they complete the sign-in for the device level PRT. Uh, let's see what happens when they open an application. Same thing if it's the Edge browser itself, because it's an Edge app that they're trying to sign in, they would still see that uh, same flow happening. It would ask whether they want to sign in, and if they say don't sign in, again, the sign-in would not complete, right? So like, if they go into, let's say, for example, Microsoft Word, and um, they would see sort of the similar flow there again when it's a desktop app. They try to get into Word. Um, this is the first time, so I'll say continue. Right. Um, they would then see the, again the same prompt. And as long as they say, uh, they keep saying don't sign in because it's the device level sign in flow, they would uh, see this message and um, they'd be taken back to the prompt. So if you have users in Europe, um, you just need to make sure that your help desk teams and your admins know what they need to do. Um, make sure you have your comms changes out, uh, informing users of the, the process, that the dialogue that they see, what they need to consent to. There won't be any settings or any config change that admins can do to turn this off because it's a, a compliance that uh, the end user needs to consent to. So it would need to be just the user doing, accepting, seeing the dialogue and then deciding whether they want to uh, continue to sign in, do that single sign on or not. So I hope uh, that was useful for you. If you have more questions about this change and uh, you want to get questions clarified, uh, feel free to send an email out to this uh, team and they will be able to get back to you with your deed, with um, you know the feedback on experiences etc on um, this change that's coming out now this will start rolling out in um, the build so you can see it's on build 2631 2787 for windows 11 um, and on windows 10 as well you can get the release preview channel that's what i did for this demo here so you can get that build and try testing it out yourself to see what the experience is, and get all your docs uh, ready. Awesome. I uh, hope you found this useful. Please uh, subscribe for more videos like this. Until next time, cheers.